guys, welcome to the player YouTube, where amongst other topics, we do car reviews. Car reviews without scratchy plastics, without me telling you how many plastic bottles I can fit in a door bin. I'm AJ, and this is the new electric car from Audi. This is the e-tron, and it's the e-tron quattro. It's the SUV electric car that Audi have been producing since 2019. It's a little bit expensive, it's got tons of curb appeal, it's a bit like my ex-wife to be honest with you, but can it cut the mustard with the competition? Well that's what we're here to find out and let you know what we think of the new Audi e-tron Quattro. The Audi e-tron started life back in 2019. Well, it was actually designed as a concept in 2015, but it wasn't until 2019 that the first car was actually sold. It's sort of kind of between the size of a Q5, an Audi Q5 and an Audi Q7. It's that sort of middle ground, if you like. However, it does sit on a decent platform. It sits on its own platform, the MLB, which is basically reserved for Audi's large SUVs. I think you can admit that this car is extremely good looking. It's quite aggressive, it's quite sporty, but at the end of the day, it still looks like an Audi SUV. It doesn't look very futuristic, does it? When you compare some of the other manufacturers, what they've actually done with their electric vehicles, they're almost space age style. They're like Tron or Total Recall, that sort of very futuristic look. Whereas this car still looks like an Audi SUV, but I think there's a reason for that because the people who are going to be able to afford one of these, because the entry level car starts at 60,000 UK pounds, and the guys who can afford one of these are obviously going to be that little bit more mature, perhaps, and more perhaps stayed in their ideas of car design because they're that little bit older. And rather than, as we say here in the UK, upset the apple cart by giving them something so new they'll go, oh no, I don't like the look of that, give them something that looks what they're familiar with and add an electric motor or two, and you could be on to a rather clever little bit of marketing. The Audi e-tron comes in seven different trim levels. Your entry level is the Technic, and your top of the range is the S Vorsprung. You've got nine colour options, including this amazing Catalunian red. I mean, this really does stand out in a crowd, but it will cost you an extra £750, because all the metallic colours are charged at £750 each. If you like black, as long as it's not metallic, it's part of the price. 20 and 21 inch rims with a couple of different styles. Plenty to choose from. With your entry level e-tron, you get 20 inch rims, you get air suspension as standard. You also get some really nice electronically controlled leather seats at the front, they're heated as well. In addition to that, you get a 3D map or satellite navigation system. You get a 10 speaker surround system, so you get some decent tunes in here as well. On top of that, you've got dual zone climate control, excellent, and you get some surround cameras. All in all, a rather tidy package. This particular car is the black edition, and it's the 55. I'll explain all that in a minute. It starts at around £79,000, and for your money, you get the following. A really nice set of 21-inch rims with massive calipers in there. Colour-coded bumpers and side skirts. You get LED matrix headlights. You also get a really cool LED daytime running light across the top there. And when you get home, they'll even put on a little light show for you. Privacy glass along the side at the back and on the rear screen too. You get an electronically assisted tailgate that you just put your hand in there like that, or you can use your key, double click in the center. And it's pretty quick. And the other thing I like is it's quite high. Some really nice, smooth, satin black roof rails. You get a bundle of black trim that apparently makes the car look more aggressive. However, if you want this sunroof, it'll cost you an extra 1,475 pounds. Let's have a look under the bonnet. Down here is the bonnet release catch. It's in the driver's footwell. Don't forget, 
you're driving a left-hand drive car, it's going to be in the passenger footwell because they're not going to move it about, are they? It's not going to go from one side to the other. Actually, undoing the bonnet is quite simple. You just push your finger in like that, you'll feel the lever, push it to the left, and let the gas struts do the work. Look at that, how nice is that? Um, nice cover on the top here as well, I like this. 60 litres of space in here, it's almost like a pannier. Great for keeping a few sandwiches in, however, it's better to keep your cables in here, and that's what we've got. The car comes with two sets of cables. One is for your home charging, so you can plug into your electricity supply. Wherever you are in the world, you'll get an adapter that works with that particular you know, energy supply. Um, and you also get the one that you use out on the road. So in the instances where you need to plug in and charge and it hasn't actually got the handle, you know, the high speed ones have got it, but some of the others haven't, you get that cable as well. There's a lot of other manufacturers actually charge for these, but they do come with the price of the car. The only thing I'll say about this system is the fact that every time you want to charge the car, you've got to lift the bonnet up. Let's talk about charging your e-tron and what it actually costs. First up, you've probably noticed this little sort of panel here. I love this, it's really cool. If you push the button there, it would actually pop open and there's your charging point in there. Now you don't need to worry about anything like this because it's all covered. It's all very waterproof and very safe. It's been tested, trust me. There's another one of these the other side. So if you're parking your car straight, makes it nice and easy whichever side you want to plug into, whichever is easier for you. Especially if you're in a service station where you've got to charge up and it might be on a certain side. You've got the choice with this car, really like that. I'm going to close that up again just to show you how neat. It's rather nice that, isn't it? Let's talk about the costs of home charging. Well, first up, you need a home charging station. Now they will cost between about 500 and 800 pounds, depending on who comes and fits it for you. At the moment here in the UK, yes, I know we're a little bit spoiled over here. The government currently give us 350 pounds towards a home charging station, which is really nice. Uh, unfortunately, that's going to run out on the 31st of March 2022. So if you haven't bought a car and ordered your home charge station by then, you're not going to get your £350. However, if you go out and buy yourself a brand new house, as of 2022, all houses that are currently being built will have to have a home charge station. Oh yes. So therefore you won't need your £350 grant. It will actually save you quite a lot of money because a home charge, as I said, between five and eight hundred pounds is your entry level. That's your seven kilowatt. You can spend up to two thousand pounds on a home charging station. It's a bit mad if you ask me. If you're out on the, oh well, the actual home charging costs, let's talk that. I was about to say out on the road, but we'll start with home charging costs. Now the costs I'm going to give you are current. This is 2022. They are with Octopus Energy. So anyone wants to query this, speak to Octopus Energy. They do a dual tariff system. So during the day, to charge one of these cars will cost you 13 pence per unit. And if you've got the dual tariffs overnight where it goes cheap, it's like a cheap overnight tariff, will cost you five pence per unit. If you're out on the road, and again, this is with BP Contactless, just for those amongst you who like to say that I'm wrong, this is with BP Contactless, we get it right. It costs on a standard charger 35 pence per unit. And if you're using one of those fast chargers, the 150 kilowatt charger, it's 50 pence per unit. It can get a little bit expensive when you're out on the road. So ideally, you want to sit at home, let it charge overnight. And to be honest, using this car, you're probably only going to charge it once in the week anyway. With the e-tron, you get a couple of different battery choices. You get a 95 kilowatt battery or you get a 71 kilowatt battery. Now they are dictated by the number on the back. So if it's a 55, that means you've got a 95 kilowatt battery. And if you've got the 71 kilowatt battery, it will be a 50. So it will say straight across the back, e-tron 50 or 55. Now obviously there's a range difference. We'll talk about that when we get it out on the road but there's also a power difference as well. So with the 55, you are talking in boost mode, 408 brake horsepower. That is delivered by two motors, one at the back, one at the front. So you've got all wheel drive, hence why you get the Quattro badge on there as well, which is Audi's famous all wheel drive system. It's all built into this car as well. What that 408 brake horsepower does give you is a naught to 60 time of five Point seven seconds and a top speed of 125 miles an hour, which is really good for a car that weighs in at over two tonnes. Round at the back, 
it's a pretty good looking car. It's very sporty, this car. It's what I like about it. Um, you've got your DAB radio up the top there. You've got a bit of aero going on here. This in turn also keeps this rear screen quite clean because it makes all the dirt and muck when you're out and you know driving around it shoot over the top. If that isn't the case, you've still got the wash and wipe here as well. That'll help you out. You've got a brake light built in there as well. Very, very handy. And one thing I do love is this is one of those floaty screens. So you haven't got that horrible rubber that runs around the side, you know, where the water gets caught in there and it rusts. And this is pin sharp. It's really nice indeed. Bit of aero down the sides. You've got the light that runs right the way across here as well. I really like that. Um, and obviously no fake exhaust at the end of the day it's an electric car we don't need them but i actually really like all the styling on this car it's rather rather cool there's a lever in there just pull that and up we go very quick like that um parcel shelf inevitable inevitable they're always in here i know some of you love them and some of you hate them they're a bit marmite aren't they yeah marmite vegemite wherever you're from you know what i mean um i'll pull it back we're going to try and pop this out it has proved a bit awkward in the last few takes of doing this we're going to try and get this done in the one take but we almost all agree that it's almost like it takes two of you to get it out it's really big as well it's very wide now as we always say on the player if it goes underneath we keep it if it can't go underneath we throw it because otherwise it just gets stuck on your lap. There's nowhere to put it. If you're going to put stuff in here, you've got 605 litres of space here. You're going to want to put stuff in it. That's what it's designed for. Prams, push chairs, buggies, you name it. Um, so we always say if we can get it under here, then great, we're going to keep it. But I can tell you straight away now, it's not going anywhere. So there's a lot of money gone into this. For what reason? Now, I can't throw it away because it's a very expensive thing. And I know Audi would probably say, you know, AJ, come on, you can't keep throwing our parcel shelves away. But I mean, seriously, look, I've got to leave it like that. It's the only place I can put it, which is such a shame. Anyway, I'm going to have to move it out of the way because I want to show you underneath. Underneath here, you can lift it up. Um, this particular car doesn't have it. You can buy a collapsible spare wheel. Yes, a collapsible spare wheel. It's an extra 300 UK pounds. It will go in there. To be honest, there's enough space in there. You could put a full-size wheel in there, a spare one or even a space saver. But yes, so Audi say a collapsible spare wheel. 300 extra pounds. We'll leave that there. It doesn't come, fortunately, with that horrible latex rubber solution and the pump. Thank you. God for that. Um, this car comes with run flats, which is really cool. And I think that is probably the way forward. Um, ideally though, if you've got the extra money and you're gonna spend 60 odd thousand pound on this car, buy yourself the collapsible 300 pound wheel. I really wanna see one. It sounds really cool. Um, 605 liters, as I mentioned, huge, massive. I'm gonna put this out of the way because it's starting to annoy me. When you wanna put your seats down, you don't have to walk all the way around there. You don't have to go in there and watch. Little button here, one here. Pop it that way, how cool is that? And then another one over here. Look at that, 1,755 litres. It's massive. You could put a double bed in there and go camping for the weekend. That's what I call space, really good space as well, because there's no sort of, yet everything you're gonna slide in here will go straight the way forward. Even your massive pieces of wood when you've been down the DIY centre and you're on a Saturday with the kids in the back, you're going to get it all down there because it's a split 60-40 seat as well. You've got some places to hang your shopping in the back here as well, which I really, really like. <laughs> got to have somewhere to hang your shopping. Um, you've got a 12-volt adapter over here. So if you've got the bikes on the roof and you're going away for the weekend, need to pump the tyres up or anything like that, bosh, straight in there, away it goes. Finally... One thing I do like, when you're lifting stuff in and out of cars like this, if you haven't got one of these scuff guards on here, which is really nice, it's going to look terrible within six months because you're putting buggies in there, dogs jumping up, bikes going in and out, all that sort of thing. So, nice one, Audi. You put a nice scuff guard on there. That's going to protect all of that. And at the end of the day, if you're down watching the polo or the horse racing, you can sit under here and it'll keep you nice and dry. Go and check it out for what it's like for the passengers. Right, before I jump in, look how far this door comes. It's really nice and open here. So if you're trying to put a baby seat in, look how cool that is. Or you're trying to help someone in and out, you know, maybe granddad or grandma and they need, yeah, it's gonna be perfect for that. Um, yes, checking it out. Bit of Al Alcantara here, nicely finished. Worth its money, I think, round the back here. Looking good so far. Let's see what it's like when we get inside. 
nice and high here so you're not going to hit your head and very easy obviously to get in and out because of that door um i'm going to check it out around here the leather is very very nice indeed it's got a center armrest here now the one thing i can't work out is you've got a place to put bits and pieces in here and hide them away but there's no cup holders i, I sort of went to open that and there was there's no cup it's a 60 odd thousand pound car and i can't put a cup of coffee here i've got to hold it in the back that seems a bit weird to me audi where's the cup holders have i lost the plot um also you get the pulley outy isofix thing again these are no good you're going to lose these or it's even worse a toddler's going to pick one up yeah you know, i start eating you know it could cause a lot of problems i cannot see how you can get away with that um you should have them on little springs so they stay in there or those ones that you know you pop in the back of the leather then you can't see them much prefer them you do get recessed seat belts yay it means you can slide across here and there is a very oh well, it's totally almost minimal because there's no transmission, is there? So there's no, and there's no exhaust. There's nothing going through there. So it's almost flat across there. Um, in the centre, for the money, I was expecting, you know, individual heating in the back here. Perhaps, you know, change the temperature. No, that's not happening either. All you can do is turn it on and off and, you know, a little bit of direction. So there's not a lot going on there. There's a little place to put maybe a phone in there you've got a 12 volt adapter down there and two usb points now that is good because you're going to need at least two usb you've got a couple of brats in the back here they've got their phones on they've got their ipads going or whatever they're going to need to charge and at least down there we've got a couple of charging ports for them the actual finish of the car one thing i do like this is in my normal seating position look at the space on the knees and audi have even cut the seats out to the point of if i had you know if i was sort of seven feet tall and i had my seat right back here i'd still have bundles of room but i like the fact you can get your feet underneath there and all in all it's a very very comfortable place to sit I like the extra with the sunroof. It's a lot of money, but I think it gives it a lot of light here in here. And also, when I pull this door to, look at the size of that rear window. It's absolutely mahoosive. And it's at a level, it's below your, uh, your uh, shoulder level. So if you're a kid sat in here in a seat, you're not going to get car sick in here at all. Let's go and check it out around the front, see what it's like for the driver. First up, before I jump in, check out how lovely these seats are in here. They've got an extra bit here which you can pull out. There's a little lever under there. You just pull it out and it gets right under your knee. So on a long distance drive, it's superbly comfortable. It's electronically adjusted over here. Let me check it out, see how comfortable it is when you sit in it. I mean, it's just superb. It's got a lovely bit on your back and it just holds you and sort of hugs you in all the right positions. But at the end of the day, it's an Audi. I'm expecting that. That's, you know, years and years of them perfecting all these bits and pieces. Another thing is check out that Audi steering wheel. Isn't that beautiful? We'll talk about that in a second. Keyless entry and keyless ignition. Yes, it does have an ignition. It's, a, it's still a car at the end of the day. You've got to turn it on and off. Um, the only thing is, Audi, I would have liked to see somewhere where we could put the key. I mean, now I've just got to sort of stick it in there, you know, what is a tiny cubby. In actual fact, that probably was designed just for the key. There you go. Um, let's get back to the steering wheel. Okay, so we have a beautiful steering wheel here. On the right-hand side, we've got the telephone system. We've got the Ask Audi button. You just click that, you know, I want to go and have a burger or get a beer, and it says, oh, take the next right, and we'll take you there, AJ. No problem at all. You've got a volume button here, and then you've got an, a little star button just below it. And that little star button, you can assign commands like cancel route guidance or, you know, call me mum, I'm scared. Or on the left here, you've got your media sections and you've also got your view on your cockpit here. I'll show you that in a sec. Uh, media section, left and right, straight through your tracks. You can slide up and down, which this will change your settings in the center here. Now I've got it on the minimal setting here. I said I'd show you the view button. You push the view, it then gets larger, and then you've got a smaller view in the middle. Still does the same thing, but it's smaller. Or you press the secondary. If you want to switch over to the map, which is where it gets really good, so the map will actually come all the way across there, especially in the minimal view. It's absolutely brilliant. Got your temperature down there, auto high beam setting as well. So it senses when someone's coming along and it'll automatically dip beam for you. Love that. Cruise control settings down the bottom here on your stalk. Again, once you get used to setting that, it's so easy. You don't even need to look at it. You can carry on driving and just set it without even looking. Um, you've got your indicator stick on the left there. You've got your wiper stick on the right. Over on the far right hand side is your lighting panel. 
again, very simple. These are haptic buttons as well, so you get a bit of feedback off them. You push that, set it in the auto position, let it do its thing. If you do need fog lights front or rear, there's a separate button either side of that where you set your fog lights. On your seating arrangement, I did want to mention this to you. There is a couple of memories down here. You've obviously got your mirror settings here and you've got your, light, your windows over there as well. Unlock and lock button next to your handle there, your, um, the actual handle itself. There's the lock and unlock buttons. Another nice little thing that I love, I love bits like this with Audi. Um, there's a place to put your, you know, knickknacks, if you like. You can put your wallet in there or sunglasses, you know, shades or whatever. Really nice, simple down there, easy to put all the bits away. We'll go back to the centre here. There is a place to charge your mobile phone down there. It's, um, it's on the upright, I like that. Slips in there nice and easy. Um, and anything, you know, that's self-chargeable, you can stick down there and it will give you some charge. There's also a 12 volt adapter. One of those as well. I don't even know why we'd use those anymore. I suppose you would stick a pump in there or something if you were trying to pump your front tyre up, something like that. Um, double cup holder, again, really nice. You can put your cup in there and it will hold it. Um, two USBs, USB-Cs, so you get the adapter. Eventually, everybody will be USB-C and we won't need the adapters. And then there's going to be millions of these things flying around all over the place. But for the current time, they give you an adapter anyway. Um, in the centre here, you've got your camera settings over here. Hang on, I've noticed my favourite. You know what I love. I love a knob. I've got a really nice black knob in here as well. You haven't noticed it yet, have you? Look, it's there. It's a volume knob. Yes, at least there's one knob in this car. Sorry, careful. Don't even go there. That is your volume knob. And then to your right is your start button. Got your camera buttons in the middle, like I said. Lower screen does all your climate control. That's your air con, your heated front seats, which is on at the moment and is rather nice and warm, keeping me warm. Um, that's completely separate to the above screen here, which is your main infotainment screen. If you go to the home button there, it will set up and then you can scroll across nice and easy. It's so easy to use in this car, really easy. Go into your car settings, got your telephone settings, you know, you just push and then it tells you. And if you've got a problem with it, then just ask. <laughs> it's simple, go on, the, go on the internet and ask the internet or ask, you know, someone on YouTube. Aha, yes, we might know someone who might have the answer to that. Again though, the way this car is set up, I love all the angles, I love the fact you've got this glossy black up here, just really nice. It does sort of feel a little bit quality. Let's have a look in the glove box, if that's a, a reasonable size. Well, to be honest, if we didn't have this stupid book in here, the user manual, I mean, come on, anyone use these these days? You, you still use these user manuals, do you? I think it's ridiculous. You imagine how much that costs. If you're selling like two or 300,000 cars a year and you've got that amount of pages and this book and then you've got to create this and put it all together and then it takes up all the room in your glove box, wouldn't it be better, instead of charging us 300 pound for a collapsible you know, spare wheel, wouldn't it be better just to give us the collapsible spare wheel and throw these in the bin? Because we don't need them. You know, it's just, and look, there's, there's all the space is taken up as well. Um, your actual driving part of this car, yeah, well, that's the important bit. Um, forward and reverse and park, that's it. And it's here, it's almost like you want to go like <laughs> Starship Enterprise. <laughs> Um, there's actually a button here, so you put your foot on the brake and you just click that. I'm going to do that. There you go. And it clicks into gear and it's telling me, put your seatbelt on. It's getting really dangerous. And then you put it back into part like that and it will go quiet again. Um, and reverse, obviously, is forward. And then it will sort of move backwards as well. Listen, all in all, this car is perfectly set up. But what's it like to drive as an electric car? Let's go and find out. When you get out on the road in the e-tron, the first thing you're going to notice is the silence. It really, really is quiet. You can even hear my watch telling me it's like whatever hour it is, it just beat then. Normally you can't hear that when you're driving a car. I thought this having 21 inch rims was going to be, you know, quite a bit of road feedback, but no, nothing. It's, it's so silent, it's incredible. I love this big windshield, it gives you great peripheral vision all the way around here. It sort of connects really nicely. Really thin pillars up the front here as well. I, th I really like those. Big mirrors, and they're nicely shaped as well. I really like those. So there's a lot going for this car. Obviously, you've got the fun of the, the power when you put your foot down, especially, you know, if you're in a sports mode. 
but it does tend to wallow a little bit. The, the, the weight, you can really feel the weight when you're driving this car, the way it throws it about. So the mode button, which is down here on the lower screen, actually when you push it, comes up on the top screen. So don't look down when you're trying to change the mode. But you've got around about six or seven different modes. I tend to leave this car in the auto mode, which is what it was in there. Um, it just sort of takes care of everything then and you don't need to worry about it. There is an off-road mode and things like that as well, which is really good during the winter, obviously, if it's uh, slippery conditions. Um, let's talk a little bit about range uh, for the range anxietists amongst you. So we've done a test on this car. We took it out on the motorway and we put it in cruise at 70 miles an hour. And we did around about 70 miles in total and we were getting around 155 miles between charges, which is not the best, but just to let you know, so at least you're aware of what you can get in real world terms, not what I've been told by the motor manufacturer themselves. Um, then we tried it around town, and what a complete difference it made, because when you're out on the motorway, obviously, you know, there's no real sort of regen, there's no way of putting electricity back into the system, so to speak. Whereas around town, when you're braking and stopping and starting, you are sitting around a lot and you're going at a lot slower speeds as well. And I had it in the economy mode, just to let you know. And I was getting about 220 miles between charges, which is not bad, it's really not bad. Now, one thing you have to remember, during the winter, when it gets really, really cold, you will lose around 10% of those figures I've just given you because when the battery gets cold, it seems to take more, you know, it uses more juice out of it, so to speak. Now, speaking of batteries, I did speak to Audi about the depletion on this battery. Now, let me give you an idea what depletion is, because a lot of people, when they're buying electric cars, it's one thing they tend to sort of overlook, whereas I've, I'm quite keen on getting to the bottom of a lot of the depletions between certain manufacturers. Um, depletion, right, very simple explanation. Mobile phone, brand new, we've all had one, come on, do you know, you've got to admit it. You get your brand new mobile phone, and for the first sort of eight, maybe nine months, you're only charging it maybe once a day or not even once a day, sometimes twice, you know, twice in, uh, uh, once every two days. Sorry, I get my words right in a minute. Um, and you almost even bragging to your friends and that, oh yeah, I've got this new phone, I only have to charge it every two days. Um, and then after about eight, nine months, suddenly it's like, oh, hang on a minute, I, I need to charge my phone. Yeah, but it, I only charged it last night. Well, it needs charging. Oh, um, and then you suddenly realize that you are charging it more than once a day. And after a year or so, especially after the warranty's over, you know what I'm talking about, um, you're then down to charging twice a day. And after that, it just gets worse and worse and worse. There is actually a little thing on your phone which you can tell you, it's called battery health. And when you go into that, it will tell you the maximum you can actually charge that. Now, with a car, it is absolutely no different. This is a giant mobile phone, basically. Um, you're sitting on a lithium battery, no difference. So the battery depletion, the battery health will be pretty much the same as a mobile phone. And when I spoke to Audi about this, they said, yes, yes, we are aware of battery depletion. I said, can, you know, another thing you've got to worry about, can you replace the battery on this? Because you can on a mobile phone, that's fairly simple. They just crack it open, they put a new battery in for you. And obviously in a car, it's a much bigger job than doing it on a mobile phone. Yes, yes, you can change the cells on this car. Fantastic. I said, well, what about price-wise? What's it going to cost if I've got to replace the battery? We'll let you know. And that was three days ago. Um, so I'm not really expecting them to give me a call back in the very near future because I think we're at a point with electric cars at the moment, it's all new, it's all lovely, yeah, we won't worry about that, we'll cross that path when we come to it. But to be honest, you know, the second hand, the residual value market in, in these cars is going to have to depend a lot on whether that battery is still good. You know, is there a way of getting it tested, things like that. That's what I would like to find out because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a huge drop in the price in these cars if we suddenly find out that the battery depletion is worse with one manufacturer than it is with another. Just something to bear in mind. So there you go. For the range anxieties amongst you, that's all covered in what we just said. And I hope, well, there's one thing I did also want to mention. I found a way of getting a bit more range out of your electric car. Well, out of specifically the Audi e-tron. Because when you have your air conditioning on, Yes, well, we all love a bit of aircon, don't we? Come on, you know, especially in the winter, want to keep warm, or even just have the heating on in this car. You're about 25, 30 miles less range 
in your range calculation, which is up on the top of your digital cockpit up there. And I suddenly realized I turned it off like that. And I looked up and it had gone up. So it had gone, I'm gonna do it, you know. So it had gone, it started when I had it on and then I turned it off and look at the difference. The difference is huge, absolutely immense. I couldn't believe it. And then I thought, well, how am I gonna keep warm when it gets cold? Aha, heated seats. They don't run off the, the big battery. They don't run off that big lithium battery. They've got their own battery, the little battery that sort of takes charge, you know, from that battery, so to speak. It's a bit complicated, but you get my drift. So it's not changing anything up there. And I can have the heated seat on, keeps me nice and warm, keeps my back warm. And to be honest, the rest of the car, I wouldn't even notice the difference. I'm nice and warm and toasty. So there's a top tip from AJ. Don't put your aircon on, it'll give you about another 25, 30 miles of range in your e-tron. Just put your electric seat on and use the auxiliary battery. Genius I am, I know, you're gonna thank me for it. Anyway, as for driving this car, you know, once you get it in a sport mode, it's got some decent, yeah, decent power about it. It, as I say, it rolls a little bit, but it's such a nice car to drive. You're in the right position, the steering wheel's just right as well. And at the end of the day, it is still a really nice Audi. With the Audi e-tron, you get a number of different safety assists. You've got things like autonomous braking in town, that's front and rear. You've also got pre-collision assist, which will let you know if it thinks you're gonna have an accident, things like that. You get the blind spot mirrors, you've got lane key P. There's a button here where you can turn that on and off on your uh, indicator stick. Uh, you also get distance control, uh, lane departure control. You've got the cruise control. It is almost never ending when it comes to Audi and safety systems. You've got the NCAP 5 rating, makes this probably one of the safest cars on the road today. So there you have it guys, that was the Audi e-tron and I hope you enjoyed watching that video review as much as I enjoyed filming it all. I've had this car for well over a week now and I've got really used to it and I can honestly say it would definitely be in my top 10 test drives when it comes to electric cars. You've been watching me AJ on the Player YouTube channel, don't forget like, subscribe and comment and in the comment box if you've got any questions just pop them down there and one of the team will get back to you as soon as possible. Subscribe if you would like and leave the bell sign unchecked and that will give you regular reminders that we've put videos up because we're doing two or three videos a week at the moment and they're not all just car reviews, no no, go on the channel and have a little look at all the stuff that we do because we are part of the player and the player is a much bigger organization it also has something that i'm going to offer you guys for free yes there is something for free in this world can you believe that it's called the player and it's a 220 page book for guys us guys so it's all about cars and boats and motorcycles jet skis food and golf and all the things that us guys absolutely love it comes as this massive sort of bookazine, as you can see I'm holding there, um, but I can't honestly give you that for nothing. So unfortunately, well not unfortunately, for you it's a bargain because it's the internet version, the online version. And all you've got to do if you want that is go to www.theplayer.co.uk. There you go, hang on, it's coming in there now. It's a little bit low, I had to bend down there. I'll leave it up for a few seconds so you can memorize it. Just head over there, go up to the subscribe tab, I think it's register, and just put your name and your email in. That's all that you need to do. There's no data capture or anything like that. You can then either download it or you can view it online, turn the pages, it's very easy to do. I love playing with it actually, it's really good. You can go backwards and forwards, all sorts of things. It comes up every three months, there's a different issue. It's yours, completely free of charge. Thanks for watching guys. I'll be back next week with something different.